Welcome to the FMCG podcast. Make sure you're following us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave us a five-star review. It really helps us out. Enjoy the show. Hi, my name is Rich and we are Consumer Hub and we focus on recruiting within the consumer sector. And this is the FMCG podcast where we speak to some of the most interesting people we can get our hands on and hear all about uh, their insights into career development, their businesses and also their products and their stories. And today we've got Fatso on the show. Fatso are a really exciting chocolate brand with a, with a difference in a twist. And we've got... Um, Ella here and Hannah talking all about the product and the story. So can you just give us a quick insight into your brand, your business and just what it's all about so anyone listening and watching can just get that snapshot into you and your mission? Uh, sure. So we're Fatto. We're a new brand. We've only been going for about a year and we are all about bringing um, fun back into dark chocolate. So we uh, are a dark chocolate, super chunky, highly ethical um, brand and we we basically don't take ourselves too seriously. So unlike a lot of other dark chocolate brands that are, you know, very thin or kind of a bit serious or, um, you know, apologetic in their portion size, we've thrown that <laughs> all out the window and gone big on the eat, big on the chunk. And um, basically we celebrate more in life. More matters is our motto. Love <laughs> that. You, you, what was it? There's a there's a, a phrase on your website. Is it from a uh, farm to face, which I really like. It's like very very playful. Just like yeah. get it in your face, enjoy it, love it. Um, exactly. Like life serious enough um, without having to make chocolate something that's serious as well. So um, yeah. yeah, we're about the big chunk, the big flavors, but we do all of the good stuff behind the scenes to make sure that you know you know that our farmers are cared for um all about the packaging is sustainable we yeah use vegetable dyes you know, packaging um all compostable and you know you've had a piece of chocolate when you put one of your chunks or one of our chunks in your mouth for sure it's it's certainly very very instagrammable having looked at your <laughs> socials and the website like uh yeah it just looks, looks flipping great but just for those watching listening can you just give me a quick insight into your that like, way you've come from your backgrounds because people are always really interested to understand like your stories as well and how you've got to this point because you said it's quite year to year old but what were you doing before that so my background was i sort of classically trained as a brand manager um yeah. at the start of my career and then um so I worked for big blue chip companies so I've done the big corporate world thing um and then uh, I moved to Canada for a few years and I worked in advertising there so I sort of went over to agency side and had a lot of fun um there doing you know doing the more kind of communication side of things I guess so being a bit more connected into the consumer um and how you speak to the consumer so that was good and then um, I worked for a design agency for a bit so that was when I got my more experience in uh, thinking about packaging and you know how do you stand out on shelf uh, but really I'd always had this sort of underlying entrepreneurial spirit in me um, I always was fascinated kind of about businesses and how they run and the kind of holistic picture I was never very good at staying in my lane in okay. the companies I worked for <laughs> I was always causing trouble everywhere, so uh, so it's probably quite good that I can uh, that we you know, still is I'm causing trouble. Can I ask? cause trouble? But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm allowed to cause trouble. Yeah. It's, We're so, a challenge um, of brands. We do exactly. So um, so yeah, it just felt and maybe it's in my blood. Uh, but uh, yeah, but that that was that was why. So yeah, kind of gone from the big corporate, but now just yeah, loving my life and startup and getting my hands dirty and everything from from you know so did, so did you and Hannah Jane know each other before you'd started the business or have you met since no I I uh I found Hannah through LinkedIn and poached her right. <laughs> and I was working in yeah. a yeah in a slightly different space then um so I uh, unlike Ella have not really done the whole big corporate thing never really been something um I've been passionate about and um have always sort of sought out more entrepreneurial opportunities and um I've always loved sales, love people, really love building relationships. So it was almost like sort of a natural transition for me to always work within that space. Um, and then about five years ago, I helped launch a CBD brand into the UK, mm, which nice. at the time it was, um, you know, it wasn't really very heard of, but it was a wellness sort of lifestyle product and it did really, really well. Um, and from there, I kind of just really honed in on my my development of um, working with independent retailers, building relationships, um, sort of really working hard to get those 
customers and repeat orders and then growing that business and that was sort of something I did all organically by myself which then led me to be um, poached by another company to come on and do a similar thing for their brand as well and, and that sort of grew so I was working very much in sort of CBD lifestyle wellness um, but obviously entrepreneurial has always been something that's really really passionate to me and then when Ella approached me at first I was a bit sort of thinking chocolate's not I mean as much as I love chocolate it's not really what I'm doing at the moment but it really does feed in very nicely because fundamentally you know we're, we're telling a story we are yeah. all the time educating people and not all the brands I've worked for it's all about educating because they've all been challenger brands like educating why does somebody take CBD in a mint form why does somebody put it on their body and why does somebody want to have a really big chunky chunk of chocolate called fatso versus you know a bar of cabbage yeah. so, it's very much about telling that, that so narrative. many reasons why so exactly many so reasons. many reasons why and I love yeah I'm, I think I've already touched on I love talking to people and that's like part like one of the best things I get to do in my job is actually go out to meet people and explain to them about the product and convert them and um and, and then they become long lasting loving customers um so that's sort of how my journey has evolved here and it's really great space to be in because um We've got so much more to come, and this is only really the beginning. A year in, we've got you know over a hundred and fifty independent listings. That's you know what we've done Fantastic, ourselves. Yeah. Um, we, we're scanning across other countries as well. We're not just UK. Uh, we've got you know loads in the in the pipeline in terms of um that independent space is so exciting to be in, isn't it? So some of my favourite brands, my favourite brands that we've worked with, have kind of really just honed in on you know getting great independent sort of relationships going strong activation there and you know getting the foundations right in that you know that they're, they're reaping the rewards five years later and uh, I've, personally I just find it's just a fascinating sector so many interesting personalities and it's often where you get your breaks to run to really kind of show and stand out isn't it yeah I think as well it's it's been I was talking to someone last week and they I, we sort of said oh you're in 150 independents and they were like so what wholesaler do you work with I'm like, oh, well, actually, we do work with wholesalers, but that figure doesn't include the wholesaler wow. listings. That's just us. And um, he just couldn't fathom it, just couldn't understand yeah. how we were doing it, how you could do that. And it's like, yes, it, it takes a lot of time and it's, yeah. made, you know, but, and, but, you know, it's the only way to really connect with how your brand's doing as well. And we, it's the only way we can really understand how... Uh, people are responding what people love what they don't love also it's quite an education around um, how a bit different people around the country receive it and how yes, they behave you know like the Scots the Scots bloody love us you know I can't we can't can't keep up with the orders from yeah. you know these independents in Ad- right. Aberdeen Edinburgh you know and you go up north don't you to sort of Manchester and Leeds and they see the name and and, and when we go up there they're like so that's me I'm the fat so yeah. you know, honestly um, when I saw the name Ellie said to me she said Rich you're gonna flipping love this brand it's called fat so and I was like I'm sold I don't even know what it looks like but I'm sold on the name exactly <laughs> um so yeah it's really it's been a really nice we we it's always um been important to us to build this brand with total integrity and also in a way that's true to us and our values and we're a people's business at the end of the day like we care like for us that people make the difference you know we're we wouldn't be here without the people behind it and and driving it so you know it doesn't make sense to me that we would then sit behind various layers in a supply chain and never connect with the people that are on the front of the line so um so um sorry it's really interesting what 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 gave you the idea originally to reimagine dark chocolate as fatso because it's like on face value you think chocolate's been done hasn't it like so many people in it yeah like i think i genuinely i'm not just saying this i think it's a really brave move to become a big bold like fatso in that space like what gave you the spark what made you think yeah this is my idea i'm, I'm doing it well it, exactly to your point it's so saturated mm. and if you're going to go up against probably one of the most saturated categories there is you can't exactly just slip in alongside everyone else and think yeah. you're gonna make you know your first million in, in a few so um we had to be brave you know and I think as a more than ever startup businesses have to be brave because if you're not brave and you're not bold you're just setting yourself up it, it just won't work um especially when consumers are you know inherently a bit nervous at the moment they're not um you know that they themselves aren't aren't taking risks and so they're they're kind of probably leaning into those comforts and things that they know so you have to 
be there to, you have to get in front of people in a way that's like oh I can't I can't say no to that or I can't turn my head away from that because it's just so but mad you yeah know? it's um, there in your face isn't it <laughs> but Fatso really came we we always knew that it was going to be a really big chunky bar because we were just fed up of dark chocolate being so apologetic in its form um and it's so delicious good dark chocolate is just so good um and uh, so we knew it was going to be chunky and then we kind of when we were concepting about around our manifesto and what the brand was going to stand for um it was all around extra with everything like come on it's chocolate like let's not hold mm. back we hold back in every other facet of our life if you're gonna have chocolate have chocolate yeah and um so the fact so kind of fell out of extra with everything as a as a kind of idea and then that evolved into yeah. more matters and um in fact, I'm just looking here. We've got we've got our Fatso More Matters motto on some packaging, but we did start with Fatso Made for More. So, I do, I <laughs> so do we've love been more through various iterations. I <laughs> never even noticed that actually. <laughs> this is this is this is like a che- cheesy question I ask everybody, but um, I'm always interested in the answer. Like, what what do you see your mission as? Do you have like a defined mission? Like, what is the mission of Fatso? If it's selling chocolate, that's also cool. I mean, I'm just always interested in like how people sort of define that, like the the story I mean, arc of where they're going. It's much more than just selling. It's, yeah, it's much more than selling, isn't it? I think it's more about, well, touch on sort of education and also, um, you know, still people associate dark chocolate as like a fine red wine. If they don't really know mm. the terminology or, or what it's about, it's like, oh, no, I don't like dark chocolate. And I hear that a lot. I don't like dark chocolate. And I always challenge them. I say, okay, well, if you don't like chocolate, then please just try this. And if you really don't like it, then you don't like it. And I think I've, I've, had the opportunity to sample on so many people over the past week mm-hmm. I think maybe a hundred said to me they don't like it and after trying it two of them said oh it's just it's not that I really dislike the flavour it's just not my thing mm-hmm. so that to me just goes to show that people have got this mindset of it's black or it's white and I think for us it's about you know the, the quality of the ingredients um, and having things in moderation um, but also just really in, just exactly getting what were you going to say sorry no, no. Um, uh, well, as I was just going to say, kind of succinctly, our mission is to yeah. to release the lighter side of dark, to take dark. away the seriousness yeah, yeah. and the dark, the, the the kind of the fact that dark chocolate is considered this sort of maybe a little bit scary or boring or pretentious even. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of that, um, and that's just so not what we're about. We're just about like celebrating the fact that dark chocolate is just as not as good as milk if not better it yeah. definitely is better definitely is better. um and it's more permissible it's better it's better the quality the taste you know you use less ingredient you know you there's less stuff and crap that goes into it yeah yeah great and no, there are so many clean. brands out there as you say there are so many brands but the ones that i think a lot of people like i mean there's the oat brands and there's the other brands out there but you know we're naturally vegan by default which yeah. um which is amazing in that also so we, we appeal mm-hmm. to everybody really on many many uh, facets so that, it's a very like, approachable brand that, that's like, i love um love raw um over in manchester that do the vegan snacks but one of the things that i love about them is that they just they just privilege taste and quality of products over the vegan message i'm not a vegan um so like i'm i'm just not interested in whether it's vegan or not selfishly yeah. i just want to eat great stuff if it's vegan cool i just i don't care yeah um, but i i just love those products and they i genuinely think they're better than some of the kind of the uh the old school classics that they they emulate and um they're just they're just so so tasty and i think if you can just every time you know give the consumer that like hit of quality then they don't forget it do they and they don't mind like what's in it it almost like you, but you them into that journey with you can unless you just hit wowing them at first but how and a question i had for you and, and it kind of links back to our point about the independences at chocolate it's a um you know it's a, a kind of key gifting area isn't it for independence and it's a kind of high margin high value area so it's an important part of their fixture and if they're going to give you space against the kind of other maybe more established challenger brands then you've got to have that compelling message that you've got around the taste of the product but then how do you like stand out at shelf how do you like win the fixture because i'm always really intrigued by like how startup brands you know it's one thing isn't having a great product that like punches in its own right against these big brands on taste and quality but then you've, you've got to get people to buy it at fixture as well haven't you like how do you guys do that you obviously having like great success with all those listings but like what's just give us a bit of a window into your thinking there and how you how you kind of win in that environment in store 
Have you seen our packaging? <laughs> I mean, I've seen, the, yeah, the packaging is awesome. Um, but like, is it, I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's just down to the packaging. Like, you just talk us through, like, what, what makes you win? I think a lot of it is, it's down to the packaging, you know, Love it's it. obviously the conversation. It's, it's, um, it's always quite funny when you when you come out with a name and you tell them fatso and then they're a bit sometimes taken back and then when you tell them the story then they're all ears and they want to listen um and we find that most people that receive a sample they are quite quick to come back and say actually we all loved it we'd love to take an order yeah. um we don't often with the independence you don't really talk about where you're going to be on shelf that's not really a conversation that that is had with independence that's more when you're talking with the bigger opportunities right. because then there's you know paid for different shelves and different mm-hmm. shelters and marketing around that so independence when we um when we get put on shelf we often don't know until we receive a picture and we say send us a pic and we'll put it on our Amazing. story like that's really interesting so that's great yeah. so we do a lot of sharing there but what i have found with those independents um when they send us pics further on in a few months time we probably have moved from down and we've got a little bit higher and we've got nice. more space. So yeah, clearly yeah. it goes to show that people are coming in and they're seeing the product and asking and, and it's proved popular. So it's being moved higher because they obviously understand as retailers that, you know, the yeah, eye yeah. levels at a certain place and this is a good seller for them. So um, whilst we don't really have um, have, have that, that say, it's clearly showing that the customer is, is liking it and they want to put it in a more prominent place. Okay, we do... Great. I think the other thing with the in the independence is supporting them with things like samplings and um, just being present and 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 getting people to try it. And then it's very rare that people try it and then don't go and buy a bar. Yeah. You know, so at this stage in the, and at the moment we're and I hope that we'll always be able to is to support those smaller businesses as well as, you know, as we get bigger paying for better fixtures and all that you know if we get into a grocer or you know we have just um we've just uh gone into wh smith travel so all of their which is a very different customer for them than their high street stores as you can imagine so um they look for more premium brands in in that um travel space so airports and train stations basically um but we do have some kind of more traditional insta activations going on in there and from a creative perspective that's just about being us big bold and a bit mad you know (laughs) and a bit different you know it's not just about putting a pack shot with a big price on it you know it's about so you get the the resonance you get the listing and it just works yeah nice virtual circle yeah 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 yeah. What, what about like do you, do you find um because conversation i've had a lot of people recently is about how to sort of leverage good social activation you know influencers kind of competitions um and then sort of drive people into kind of um yeah i guess destination stores within that ind- independent space like is, is that something that that fatso has done is it something that you're kind of exploring and finding success in i'm, I'm just interested because it seems to be like like a really interesting current discussion at the moment how you can like leverage working with kind of independence socially and then almost like use those partnerships to then drive you know like that reverberation back in into the, the kind of the independent footfall and, it, and it's not like it, it's not funnel marketing is it? it's not performance marketing where it's linked to an e-store but it's this kind of interesting loop that actually has like this real world effect in the independence is that something that you've seen or you know i'm off topic there do, do you mean from a uh, working with influencer slash pr alongside yes yeah, so i've seen some i've seen some interesting um collaborations with like influencers where they've maybe done a product shout out but then they've also like name dropped to like a local independent where they've got an event going on and mm-hmm. then the brands they're activating on site and then you know um people are kind of who, who love the the influencer they're following that they're going to a site where there's an activation and it's driving like this kind of cascade effect for the influencer for the retailer and then also for the brand as well um and, and there's kind of really interesting kind of activation is that anything that you've experimented with or like explored or um we've not the only people we've sort of done something like that with is uh harvey nichols so harvey nichols cool. have been hosting can you hear us yeah i can yeah yeah can you hear me all right? Sorry. Cool yeah, yeah, it? you just froze for a minute. Um, yeah, so, oh, I mean, it's not so much the independence, but Harvey Nichols do sort of private events and have influencers and things like that. Um, so we've been participating in, in those, those yeah. and obviously that's then um, driving that kind of um, trio effect, I guess. Um, yeah. But no, we've not done anything like that specifically for smaller independents. So no, but I think we should. We yeah, could, yeah, we could it's explore. A good idea. It's a great idea, and um, and I think you know with the sort of bigger independents like Revital, yeah. um, and some of those with the more um that have more uh 
and more destination places yeah. so independent stores that people really know about or there's maybe a um there's an association it's a bit like being seen at the hottest new restaurant isn't it yeah I suppose. yeah um that there could be something interesting in that yeah for sure yeah. I mean it, journalists um influencers stuff that's definitely a focus for us um obviously what's important to me though is that it's done as organically yeah. and as authentically as possible right. because I think yeah. Yeah. consumers aren't stupid yeah. <laughs> so all of this sort of paid for stuff is is uh, I find quite hard to yeah it's a bit obvious isn't it it's well and I just don't think it worked you know we had um we had a it was actually organic but we had an, an organic we, we gifted a bar to um an influencer that who had over two million followers so you think oh god you know if if that person does it it's gonna explode and i i mean i think we gained maybe 50 followers and i don't think there was a single sale because yeah. i think you know that they, because they are that person was typically always paid to do these things so consumers i think are probably like well you've been paid to do that so I'm not necessarily going to trust your judgment on it yeah whereas you get someone with a much smaller following but as a really committed following and has said like you know organic gifted or bought mm. or like they've written up a piece in the Guardian, the Guardian weekend, that, was great. that was great like yeah, that's, that's when you actually see yeah. results so um yeah I'm a real believer in like organic advocacy um through people that actually people want to hear from yeah that's really interesting. I suppose that just counts for so much, doesn't it, in the space? You know, authenticity, you know, exactly. uh, yeah, that's just really interesting. Um, just, just on that point, I just want to make sure I put a spotlight on the products for people. Just talk us through the range, talk us through the best sellers and, and what you love about the products. So we have four big chunky flavours and each has their very own story. So um, Home Run, which is the one you mentioned earlier. So yeah. that's a salted pretzel, whole almond and honeycomb that's inspired that's like our ode to the classic baseball snack um so you know bit of a nod to our friends across the pond um and uh yeah so that's the home run uh then we have nan's dash which is you know nan's let's face it are the ogs of sneaky snacking so <laughs> we've taken her biscuit tin which of like peanut toffees biscuits um yeah. peanuts uh and we pop those into our our bars as well so that's like you know, our nod to to Nan and her <laughs> like the sec the secret treat she used to, to pass you when Mum wasn't looking. Um, we have Morning Glory, which is our cornflake toast and marmalade because breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And if we were going to create something where you know you can have dark chocolate all day round all day long, we had to we had to give that's, you a that's bar. Needs a to be a bar. breakfast then. Breakfast yeah, exactly. in a bar is what I call it. Totally permissible. Um, and then our newest flavour, which we only la we launched actually in with in line with the King's coronation this year, um, is King's Ransom. So that's pistachio, cacao nibs, and mint. Touch of mint, um, and it's so decadent that we had to hold the king to ransom to pay for it. Has uh, have you sent a bar to the king? Uh, we did. We um, <laughs> well, we did do a campaign um nice. where we before we launched we did like a teaser campaign where we we did abduct um king charles and held him yeah. in a basement yeah i'm glad he got out Would we... <laughs> yeah well he was very concerned he missed his crown fitting so i don't think his crown fit on <laughs> telling he was smothered in chocolate as well yeah. wasn't he <laughs> couldn't get enough i have to send you the links to the uh yeah you can take a look video. at the videos <laughs> um and I guess just just kind of rounding it off for people, um, it's just really really interesting just getting insight into the business and the journey so far. Like it's great. Like what what's around the corner? Anything exciting that you can share for next year? Or so next year is going to be. We, we the key thing for us is that this it is about dark chocolate, but it's not just about bars. So we do have an ambition. We're we're plat to be a platform brand. So we want to launch other formats. I'm not going to tell you what they are. <laughs> Ooh, um, okay. <laughs> but there will be that. other ways to enjoy dark, dark chocolate in a chunky fatso way um so we've got that you're yeah. we're doing hannah's got a bit of a international agenda going yeah we've got a few things coming up um a trip to barcelona in a couple of weeks um which is looking at more growth outside of the uk as i mentioned we're sort of 
quite established here. We have got some organic growth outside and we really want to hone in on some of those other territories. So there'll be more um, international fatso um, yeah, exposure there. Exciting. So that's exciting. Take, um, taking fatso international. It's great. We are. The world needs yeah. to know. <laughs> have you, have you, for, for, for people that are kind of looking at the journey that you've been on and that they're excited by it and they want to be in a, I don't know, a cool startup environment, doing something different, you know, doing something new. Have you got any advice on what people need to hone in terms of, you know, skills, attributes, just general qualities that help people succeed in their own careers? You know, if, if they want to go for maybe a bigger brand into something that's a challenger. We were talking about this um, yesterday, weren't we? I think if you're, um, I think you're either made for it or you're kind of not um, in a way. Yeah. It's not something, you know, working for a small startup is essentially coming and working with entrepreneurs. And therefore, inherently, you've got to have that hustle, that heart, that entrepreneurial spirit that willingness to kind of get stuck in you know you don't have the same structure and roles that you might have in a bigger company it's kind of a very roll up your sleeves you know you'll have a, a, a an area that you're yeah. focused on but you know I say everyone in the bit you know there's there's four of us and it's like well everyone's a seller from the you're if you whether you're an accountant or a brand manager on your title you're still you know it's still about getting the brand out there and and increasing distribution so in some shape or form yeah yeah so you've got to have that sort of um i guess energy and appetite to help grow a business and i think that's something that's quite innate within people um it's not something that i think if people really like a lot of structure and they like to have a clear job spec and this is what i do and this is what i don't do I, you know but, but for me it's not about honing skills it's about attitude because I think you can teach you can teach the job <laughs> um whether you're fresh yeah. out of college or university or school or you know you've had a career in something totally different and you're switching I think if you have that desire to be part of something and grow something and help be one of the defining elements of that that's all I would look for yeah. in someone at this stage um fundamentally we are the fatsos we are the, the face of the brand we're the people that talk about it all the time to everybody so whilst we have a product you know we, we need people within our team that um you know we all work quite closely together and, and as ella said you know we do a bit of everything i just don't yeah. just do sales and ella doesn't just do no operations. you might be ordering loo roll yeah for the first five minutes of your day that's just the way it is <laughs> yeah yeah okay so yeah just i guess that's like you've got to have the hunger you've got to have the energy you've got to have the the kind of the, the drive as well to, to yeah basically just make it happen bit of jfdi goes a long way exactly and i think you know you just i think it's important to be um you know you kind of got to want to get out there and as you say be the face you yeah. know you've got to be cool about picking up the phone getting stuff done being creative figure you know finding creative solutions to problems that will inevitably happen so um what, yeah. what do you both do for for inspo what do you do to kind of keep the mojo topped up and just you know keep yourself energized because that's always a challenge isn't it just making sure you you know just manage your energy so you don't you know peak and burn out but you also you just want to maintain that momentum don't you yeah i that's mean <laughs> yes ella and i are very much into our apple watches and uh keep getting our steps <laughs> off and Hitting our hourly goals at so 10, 10 to the hour every hour. We get up and squat 50, 50 we do. Um <laughs> I introduced when I came sort of a wellness Wednesday. So when we're all together in the office, we try to um, carve out an hour at lunchtime where we, if it's not raining, like it might be today, we go for um, a nice walk along the river um, and just sort of chat all things. Doesn't not probably work related, just life, fun, what we're having for dinner that night what we're doing on the weekend um, and just sort of lightheartedness. And in terms of um, what I think is very key is, is to have a good strategy and plan in place for the year, because if everybody's on board with that, then everybody knows what they're sort of aiming towards. So no sort of crazy things come and, and you suddenly expect you're going to have to hit so-and-so target and you're not aware of it. So I think if everybody is aware of what we're trying to achieve and having those targets and just kind of constantly checking in with one another just to see how we're doing and how we can support with each other, that just makes um, life less stressful. Right. 
that's really interesting now thank you so much for sharing that's kind of really really interesting um where, where can people find you where can they follow you like what are your social handles and uh, and any kind of shout out stores where people can go and get uh, some fat set love for, for their friends and family for themselves so our instagram handle is so dot fatso um what's our tiktok sarah sorry this is i, don't, I can't remember what our tiktok one is that's terrible it's just so fatso um our website is so fatso.com testing us here um and on our website you can either buy online or you can look on our stockist page and put your postcode in and it will tell you where your nearest store is all nice. of our stockists are amazing so yeah go, be, go i don't have got enough time to to sort of list them all so yeah, yeah go onto the website see the closest ones for you please do support local if you can because those people are the ones that keep us going so as much as we'd love you to buy from us go onto the website and go buy local and have a chat to the people say you've heard the podcast and get Amazing. some facts on you definitely right well thank you so much for recommending the show it's been really good really enjoyed it and uh, look Thanks if you've been watching us. you've been enjoying it uh, please do reach out to uh, all the team at fat say to ella and hannah jane and and then just you know make sure more importantly you buy the product get it into your face let them know what you think and uh, yeah thanks for listening today guys we appreciate uh, you supporting the podcast and we'll see you soon take care